If you're thinking about building a home in Michigan, you better think again. No, I'm just kidding. You don't, you don't have to think again. But you should be asking some questions. You want to know what those questions are? Good. You're in luck because I made a list and I put them in this video. And we're starting now. If you're new here and new to me, my name is Paul and I make videos about all sorts of cities, towns, and areas all over Metro Detroit, Michigan. So if you like what you see, consider subscribing because there's a good chance I'm gonna cover some of stuff that you're interested in. And if you want to buy or build in this case, anywhere in Metro Detroit, Michigan, reach out because I'm also a full-time real estate agent and I've helped hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of people buy all over the state. All right, so before I actually get into this list, I wanna point out that if you do have a real estate agent, most builders, just about any builder, will allow you to use a real estate agent and they should ask all of these things for you. They already sort of bake it into the price, so if you're buying a house, they will pay a real estate agent to help you with all this stuff. And if you don't have a real estate agent, contact me, I'm your guy. I'll ask all these things for you. I know what to do, I know what to say, I made the list. All right, so the first question you need to ask is, what is the required deposit or down payment on the home? So if you're buying an existing property, your typical deposit is going to be between one and $5,000. It's typically about 1% of the purchase price of the home, but that's for an existing home. Builds are different. So the builder can ask you to put anywhere from five to $50,000 down just to start your project. So you should expect anywhere from three to 10% at least for a semi-custom build. If you're building a custom home, like something off the wall crazy, you're gonna be putting a lot more down. Because if you decide you're gonna bail on the deal, the builder's gotta unload that thing and it might be super weird. Maybe you have crazy weird tastes and now they've got this just stuck with this house and if you didn't put much money down, then ugh. It's important to note that your deposit does go towards the purchase of the home. So a lot of times people ask me that, like what happens with this deposit? It goes towards the, the purchase. So it's part of your whole deposit, goes towards everything. They use that money to actually get started on your build. Makes sense. Second question you need to ask is, are the deposits refundable? And what are the conditions and time limits on all that? Most builders have non-refundable deposits because they need that money to get started. They need to buy cement, wood, all of the home type things. They need the money for it. I mean, they're not gonna just come out of their own pocket to build your house. Especially if you're asking for some funky stuff. If you want like pink siding, they're not gonna pay for that. You have to pay for it. Third question you need to ask is, are there any incentives to build with you? Not you, you know, the builder. So some builders will pay for some of your closing costs if you sign by a certain date, or some will you know, give you appliances or things like that if you do things by certain time frames because they have people that they employ to build these places and they wanna keep them moving, keep them working, things like that. So you wanna find out are there any incentives, if you have anything coming up. No employer wants to just have their workers just sitting around doing nothing. Just ask, ask if there's any incentives. Next question you need to ask is, what is the timeline? What's the average timeline? And what is the timeline right now? Because the timelines change. So most builds could take anywhere from three months to a year, and that's just the construction part. So if the builder tells you it's gonna take between five and six months, that is just for construction. That's after you have signed all the docs, you've made all your selections, you've said, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. You make all of those choices and then it's gonna be five to six months. It's not like five to six months from the day you start talking because that's unrealistic. That's ridiculous. You're ridiculous. So this part right here, it's important to remember that some things are out of the builder's control. Things like weather, permits, labor, like somebody getting sick and not being able to do the work. And the most important part about this whole thing is you. You making your decisions on the build. So if you haven't given the builder your cabinet colors, you can't get mad at them for being behind in other things because they're not going to just keep people in your house working on it if you haven't even made up your mind on things. So be realistic. Don't get mad at the builder if you haven't even figured your stuff out yet. The next question you need to ask is, can you make any changes and are there any fees involved in making them? 
Most builders are not going to let you make major changes after they've already started, like things like moving around walls and things like that, unless you've got a bunch of money. If you have a bunch of money laying around, I'm sure that they'll let you do whatever you want. They'll be like, come on back. Let's move some more walls. Like, you wanna move those stairs? We can move them for you. Just pay some more money. But truthfully, a lot of the materials for your home have to be ordered way in advance. I mean, they're not gonna just run it out to Menards. I mean, depends on who your builder is, I guess. But most of them are not just running up to Menards and grabbing some random stuff off the shelf to build your house. I mean, they order this stuff well in advance, they plan it all out, they get their guys in place, and then they build your home. So if you're gonna make any crazy changes, expect to pay a butt ton of money to do it. And if you're gonna make changes, there's usually some sort of a non-refundable fee to do it. So if you say like, I don't like the stairs here, I wanna move them over here, they're probably gonna say, all right, well you give us this money and it's ours now. Like, because we're gonna pay our guys to do it. If you don't like it, that's your bad. Like, you screwed up, not our fault. Next question you need to ask is, is there a warranty on the build? So most builders offer a one year warranty on their construction. Things like nail pops, drywall seams sort of peeling apart, not stuff that you mess up. If you're moving a piano into your house and you happen to smash into a banister, that's your fault. Don't expect the builder to pay for that. I've seen that happen where people move in, screw up something inside the house and they're like, well, should the builder fix it? No, the sh builder should fix it. You should fix it. The next question you should be asking is, what are the standard features included in the build? Flooring, countertops, kitchens, bathrooms, all that stuff, there are going to be a set number of things that they will include for you, different finishes and things like that, and then you're gonna have upgrades beyond. There. Even things like air conditioning, it's crazy, but some builders don't include things like your air conditioning unit. They'll put a forced air unit in your basement, but no AC. Where's the air conditioning? That's, that's crazy to me. Like it seems like, but that's in the fine print. You have to ask, make sure you ask, is it included? Because you're gonna be pissed if you find out you don't have AC. Moving into a brand new house in the summertime and then you find out, oh yeah, we have a furnace and a fireplace and no air conditioning, that would suck. That's something that you definitely don't wanna find out the day you're moving into a house. And speaking of standard features, don't just go for the largest home that you can afford because it's cheap. Because if it's cheap, it's usually cheap for a reason. There's a builder here in Michigan that used to put carpet in all of the bathrooms, including the master bathroom, around the tub and everything. It's freaking disgusting and people still have it in there. I'm sorry if you're one of the people who have it. I'm sorry, I, I feel for you, but it's gross. It's super gross. You should probably tear that out, put some tile in. Makes me feel a whole lot better when I'm walking around in there and I have to take off my shoes when I walk into your house and I'm walking around in your bathroom with your carpet, with your, your pee carpet. Oh, gross. Because if the builder skimps on areas like that, they're probably skimping on other areas too. So they're, they're going cheap with flooring, they're probably gonna go cheap in other areas. So don't just go for the biggest home you can possibly afford just because the price seems right. Another thing you should ask when, when it comes to features is, what about the basement height? How high are the basement ceilings going to be? Because you'll be surprised that a little bit of difference goes a long way. And how big is the garage? There is a huge difference between a two car garage and a two and a half car garage. A two car garage, you can fit two cars barely. I mean, you're not opening up any doors or anything. You just kind of got to like maybe get out and like push the car in to the garage maybe, but you're not gonna have a snow blower around there, you're not gonna have your lawnmower, you know, your weed whacker and everything unless you have it like mounted up in the, in the ceiling or something. So things like that, you cannot go back and change and you have to keep that in mind. If you're building a house, things like your basement height, your garage size, you're not gonna go back a year or two later and make those changes to the house. You're not gonna jack up the house and make your ceiling higher. So things like that you definitely want to do right off the bat. Next question you wanna ask is, how does the option process work? Most builders will give you a set amount of time that you have to make all your selections. So say like you have to pick out your cabinets, your countertops, all of this stuff by a certain date. And you want to do that ASAP. Don't mess around. Don't drag your feet on it because then you're gonna be all pissed that your house isn't done. You're gonna say, well, they said that it was gonna be six months to build my house. Why is it a year? It's a year because you didn't make your selections when you said you were and they moved on to another build because they've got places to be and people to see. That's why it's super important 
to have a vision of what you want before the build starts. I don't know, look through Instagram or something. Look at pictures. Go on, what is it, Pinterest? Make a Pinterest board of all your ideas, your crazy ideas, things that you would love to see in a home. Get those in there, and then when you go in to make your selections, you know exactly what you want. And if you need any help with that, again, I can be your agent. Let me know. So most builders are gonna have a design center that you go to and they're gonna have all the things. So it's usually a bedroom and one of the houses and they'll have all of the stuff that you get to pick from. They'll have the cabinets, the countertops, everything like that. And if you want anything crazy outside of that, you need to talk to the builder. Some will let you go to other places, other design studios and pick things out. But most want you to, especially the semi-custom builders, are going to want you to go to their design center and pick out stuff from there. Again, this is not custom builder. A custom builder is going to be a totally different experience. That's a whole other video we can talk about it. Let me know in the comments below or just send me a message. You know, like that's my website. Again, you just reach out, I'll help you. We'll talk to a custom builder. Next question you need to ask is, what is the cost for upgrades? Really, I should have titled this question, are the upgrades worth it? A lot of upgrades are way more expensive to do from the builder than if you would just have them done on your own sort of after the fact. And that's one time where it, it does help to have a professional like a real estate agent on your side sort of looking things over like, that's not worth it, that's worth it, that's not worth it, that's worth it, that kind of thing. But sometimes some of the things that the builders offer are totally fair. They're great prices and it's like you might as well do it. One advantage to this is the price gets rolled into your mortgage. So you're not paying for it sort of after the fact. So if you decide that you're going to add things or subtract things, um, that all gets baked into your monthly cost so you don't have to come out of pocket you know, for X amount of dollars sort of after. Again, I cannot stress this enough, even if you don't have a real estate agent, you should ask one about what actually adds value to the house because things like picking out your lot, you'll pay extra for things like the placement of the home and it may not add a single dollar to the overall value of your house. So if you're not planning on staying there forever, you should have somebody look at what you're thinking about doing and say like, could you sell this potentially like down the road? And speaking of upgrades, a lot of builders require you, or it's mandatory, to have a certain amount of money placed into the landscaping. And landscaping can be crazy expensive. I mean, you can pay five, 10, 15, 20, $30,000 just on your landscaping. So a lot of times when you're building a home, that's not included. Like you just have a dirt lot, but they make you do it. So if you're gonna build in a subdivision, they'll say you have to spend a minimum of five or $10,000 on your landscaping. So you have to budget for that because that's gonna come out of your pocket after closing. That's usually why you'll see in a lot of the new listings, um, sometimes builders will say landscaping included. And most people are like, who cares? Like, isn't landscaping always included? No, it's not always included. That's why it's very important. All right, the next question you need to ask is, what lots are available at no charge, zero dollars? And how much are the lot premiums? So when you start getting into the whole build process, you'll find that they'll say, new homes available from $500,000. But then as soon as you go to the center to find out about building a home in that subdivision, the only lots available are, are like a $20,000, $30,000 lot premium charge because most people will scoop up the free ones first. Because when you go to sell the home, nobody really pays extra for your lot premium. So if you build a house two years ago and you paid $50,000 extra for a lot premium, you're not always gonna get that full $50,000 back from it. Sometimes you will. Sometimes it's an amazing lot. Sometimes it's beautiful. A lot of times it's not. A lot of times it's garbage. It's not worth it. You should just go for the free ones. Unless, you know, unless it's a fantastic view then, you know, take it. Next question you need to ask is, will there be an association and what will the association fee be? What sort of rules will there be? A lot of people overlook this when they're, when they're buying a house or when they're sort of budgeting for it. They don't realize that, okay, yeah, you're building in a new sub, but if it comes with like a clubhouse and a pool and things like that, you are going to pay for those things. They're usually not going to be shoveling your snow and, and cutting your lawn unless you live in some crazy fancy place. But so you have an association fee involved and it could be a thousand, two thousand dollars a year extra added to your overall bill. So you should probably find out about that and ask, 
Can you have fences? Because that's a big thing. Can you have a shed out back? Because if you decided you're gonna just have a two car garage and not a two and a half car garage, you're not gonna have room for stuff, but you can't have a shed. I can't have a shed in my neighborhood. Drives me crazy. I wanna have a, my, my motorcycle and my snowblower and all those things put somewhere have to go in my garage with everything else. So what do you think about this list? This is definitely the list that you need to use if you're shopping for a new home. And if you want me to ask any of the questions, I can do that. If you're still looking for a place to live in Metro Detroit, go ahead and check out some of these other playlists and videos around here. And I will see you there.